In this problem, we are working with x and r, so x is some real valued number, and we're going to do an if and only if proof. We're going to show that when the absolute value of x minus 4 is greater than true, this, is, that this implies that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x is greater than x, and vice versa. So the if and only if means that the left side implies the right, and the right side implies the left. So when we work if and only if proofs, we often break it down into these two cases, and that's how we're going to do it here. So for the first case, let's show that the absolute value of x minus 4 greater than 2 implies that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x is greater than x. So we're going to go ahead and let absolute value of x minus 4 be greater than 2. So that's our assumption. We're going to deduce that, this, that we must have the absolute value of 6 minus 2x greater than x. So working with the absolute value sign is kind of the trick of this problem. And when we work with absolute values, what we usually do is break it down into cases to cover x minus 4 being positive and x minus 4 being negative. So that's how we're going to do that. So case i here is the special case where x minus 4 we're going to assume is greater than or equal to 0. By assuming this, that lets us replace the absolute value sign with just x minus 4. If x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, there is no need to take an absolute value because this is a positive quantity. So that's how we kind of handle the absolute values. So let's go back to what we're starting with. Our starting assumption is absolute value of x minus 4 greater than 2. Since for this special subcase we're assuming x minus 4 is bigger than 0, we can replace the absolute value, just get rid of them. So we have x minus 4 is greater than 2. If we add 4 to both sides, we get x is greater than 6. If we subtract 2x from both sides, we get this. If we simplify this a little bit, the left side became x minus 2x is negative x, and I just basically rewrote the direction of the inequality, so 6 minus 2x is less than negative x. And then I put a negative 1 on each side, so I multiplied both sides by negative 1. So negative 1 times the quantity 6 minus 2x is greater than negative x times negative 1 is just x. And when you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality sign. Now if we go back up a few lines, we had x greater than 6. If x is greater than 6, then 6 minus 2x is obviously less than 0. Since this is true, this means that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x is negative 6 minus 2x. So actually what we have written here at this point, because we know that the quantity 6 minus 2x is negative, we can actually write the quantity a negative 6 minus 2x as absolute value of 6 minus 2x. So what we've shown is that 6 minus 2x is greater than x, which is what we were wanting to show. Okay, so we've got part of this done. For the case where x minus 4 is assumed to be greater than or equal to 0, but now we need to do it for x minus 4 less than 0. So we need to do it this time too. So when x minus 4 is less than 0, so if we're dealing with a negative number, then the absolute value of a negative number is the negative of the negative number. So absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to a negative quantity x minus 4. So let's start with our starting assumption, absolute value of x minus 4 greater than 2. Since we're dealing with the quantity x minus 4 less than 0, we know we can replace this absolute value with the negative of the quantity x minus 4. If I distribute the negative sign, I get negative x plus 4. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get negative x is greater than negative 2. If I multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1, I get x is less than 2 because I have to flip the sign of the inequality. <clears throat> if I multiply everything by 3, I get 3x is less than 6. If I moved the 3x to the right side, I can get the inequality 6 minus 3x is greater than 0. If I write this a little funny, 6 minus 2x minus x is just 6 minus 3x. And then I can move the 1x to the other side. And now, we have to go back up a few lines. We had that x was less than 2. Since x is less than 2, that means 6 minus 2x is always going to be a positive quantity. So 6 minus 2x is positive. So six minus, since 6 minus 2x is positive, 6 minus 2x is just equal to the absolute value of 6 minus 2x. So we can replace 6 minus 2x with absolute value of 6 minus 2x. And we've concluded again 
that our starting assumption results in the absolute value of 6 minus 2x being greater than x. So we've done part one of this proof. Part one, we showed that the absolute value of x minus 4 greater than 2 implies the absolute value of 6 minus 2x being greater than x. And to show this, we had to break it down into two subcases to handle the absolute value appropriately. Okay, let's go ahead and do the second part. We need to show that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x being greater than x implies that x minus 4 is greater than 2. So we're going to assume that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x is bigger than x. And then again, we're going to break it down to subcases to handle the absolute value sign. So first, we're going to assume that 6 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 0. Anytime we deal with a quantity greater than or equal to 0, it's equal to the absolute value of itself. Our starting assumption is 6 minus 2x absolute value is greater than x. I can replace that with just 6 minus 2x because I'm assuming that it's greater than or equal to 0. If I move the 2x to the other side, I get 6 is greater than 3x. If I divide both sides of the equation by 3, I get 2 greater than x. I can flip the inequality around, write x less than 2. I can subtract off 4 from both sides, and I get x minus 4 is less than negative 2. If I negate both sides, multiply every, both sides by negative 1, I get negative quantity x minus 4 is greater than, because I have to flip the inequality because I multiplied by a negative number, is greater than 2. If we go back up a couple lines, we have that x was less than 2. Since x is less than 2, we know that x minus 4 is always a negative quantity. So the quantity x minus 4 is a negative quantity. So that means a negative x minus 4 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 4, just from the rules of absolute values. So at this point, we have shown that the absolute value of x minus 4 is greater than 2, and that's what we are trying to show. And then finally, in part 2, we now consider the case where 6 minus 2x is less than 0. This means that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x, and 6 minus 2x is a negative quantity, I can replace the absolute value of 6 minus 2x with negative quantity 6 minus 2x. Let's start with our starting assumption, namely that absolute value of 6 minus 2x is bigger than x. Because I'm dealing with a negative quantity, I can replace it like this. If I just distribute the negative, that turns it to 2x minus 6. If I subtract x from both sides, I get x minus 6 is greater than 0. So this implies, obviously, that x is greater than 6. If I write x minus 6 in kind of a funny way, I can write it as minus 4 minus 2. And then I'll move the 2 to the other side. And if we go back to our line just a few lines above, if x is greater than 6, this means x minus 4 is always bigger than 0. So x minus 4 is always positive. So x minus 4 and absolute x minus 4 are the same thing. So I can write x minus 4 is greater than 2, which again is what we were trying to show. So we have case 2 done. In case 2, we have shown that the absolute value of 6 minus 2x is greater than x always implies absolute value of x minus 4 is greater than 2. And that holds whether 6 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 0 or 6 minus 2x is less than 0. So that covers all possible values of 6 minus 2x. In part 2, we've shown that absolute value of 6 minus 2x greater than x implies absolute value of x minus 4 is greater than 2. And in the first part, we showed the other direction. So we have completed the if and only if proof.